were founded in 2002 as a response to the attack on the World Trade Center. Uh, there were significant communications problems there that went on for many months after uh, the event. And what we set out to do was make it possible for people to bring communications networks with them in response to a disaster. Uh, so we set out to do that and over the next couple years uh, we accomplished that. What we did is we made portable nodes, portable broadband wireless nodes that we call breadcrumbs. They look like this or they look like this. And uh, our primary goal was when you brought your network with you, would it be easy to set up? Would it be easy to turn on? And so that's what, we, what we've done. You turn on a breadcrumb, you have a network. You turn on a second breadcrumb, they mesh together, the third, fourth, fifth, uh, becomes a very large network, all with little or no administration necessary. So these can move, these can go on vehicles, they can go on trucks, they can go on people, they can go on aircraft, they can go on boat, boats, and uh, all moving at any one time without a network administrator, keeping a network dynamic and robust. One of the interesting things about this technology is that if you needed to upgrade the operating system of the network, you don't have to physically touch the, the device. You could send, send the operating system over a satellite link or the internet to one of the nodes thousands of miles away, and then the operating system will wirelessly replicate itself across the network. We make it possible to use all kinds of different frequencies in a network. Uh, and what we really do is we take, we take frequencies that were never intended for mobile use and we give them mobile utility. So uh, in that device next to you, the LX4, that has card slots in it for four separate radios. Mm -hmm. And those radios can be unlicensed frequencies or licensed frequencies or both. Mm -hmm. The usable bandwidth uh, is usually 25 to 30 megabits oh, okay. uh, per node. Okay. But we're not, we're not limited to four radios either. So we could, we could, if somebody had the frequencies that they wanted to utilize, mm -hmm. we could make a five radio device or a six radio device. Again, uh, either all unlicensed or, or some blend of, of licensed and unlicensed. It's a really hybrid network capability. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's an interesting way to think about adding additional spectrum to the, the spectrum that people have available for networks today. Gotcha. Our current customers are industry and the military, heavy industry and the military. Okay. Uh, military uh, for all kinds of different uh, applications from s sensor devices to video and traditional data uh, applications. And uh, the mining industry uh, is using it again for all those applications, uh, condition monitoring of vehicles, video, voice, sensors, GPS, any IP-based application you can think of is working across this network somewhere today. And then uh, we think one of the next uh, important areas for us will be the energy, uh, gas, oil uh, industry, because what we do is we make it possible to, to operate sophisticated networks in remote environments and giving that industry new capabilities in terms of monitoring critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you have wells uh, three or 4,000 miles from the nearest networking connection and your traditional means of communications has been maybe one satellite link to one device, mm -hmm. that's really expensive. We can, we can put hundreds of our nodes out there and then interspace multiple satellite gateways so we can mesh their whole working oil field together or gas field together, hundreds of nodes, thousands of nodes, uh, allowing the energy company to have constant communications with all their critical infrastructure all the time. All right, what we have is a couple of the uh, breadcrumbs with batteries in it. We're, we're outside now, outside the building. Back inside is where uh, everything's going to be monitored and watched. Uh, through a laptop for the video and a, uh, another computer running the, uh, the BC Commander where we'll see the GPS uh, coordinates uh, moving around. Uh, so we're gonna set these down and just create a bigger mesh. Uh, the network will stay connected the entire time 
uh, we, we could put these in vehicles and pretty much have the same results. We often do that. We set breadcrumbs out throughout a, uh, uh, an area of uh, several hundred yards uh, covering a parking lot, uh, several buildings. Uh, throughout this, we maintain the network. We, we can actually uh, tell that from the uh, tricolor LED that is on each breadcrumb. We were able to uh, recognize that we were, maintained a connection uh, throughout our roaming across this area. The, the advantage that this sort of network has is uh, on uh, being able to create non-line-of-sight networks, get around obstacles, and maintain very high bandwidth.